Activated Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, today's little episode is going to be about free will. I'm not sure what I'm going to title this. I'm going to figure it out at the end. I like doing this. I like just giving myself a challenge, going on a journey. But it's because I want this to be spontaneous and a bit fresh. And I'm directly answering a question here, which I thought was so good that I wanted to talk about it. And it is, this is about free will. So if you're interested in the topic of free will, astrology, and God, okay, and how all of this works and how much is written and how much isn't written and all that kind of thing. And I have talked about this on the channel before a couple of times, but it is going to be a recurring theme. And we will talk about this quite a bit because it's so important. Um, and probably as I grow and learn, my thoughts on this will also change and develop and evolve. But today I'll share with you where my mind is on this topic right now. So the comment was brilliant by Siraj. Thank you so much for commenting as you have done on this channel for such a long time. And um, it's a really brilliant question. And I know you, I know you're a very young and talented astrologer. So um, yeah, amazing that you're, you know, knee deep in this stuff and it's fantastic. So you've said that um, this was in relation to childbirth. So the video I did was Astro Chat. So who's getting a bad rap in astrology? And I think I made mention of someone who wanted to have a C-section to avoid having an Aries child, which I didn't think was a very good thing. Um, but you've rightly said that, you know, you, you've asked the question here, is your child's birth already destined? Aren't they always going to be born at a certain time and day and have a certain chart? So like that person who had the C-section, although it seems like this person altered their child's time of birth, maybe the new time was actually the time the child was meant to be born. I know what you're saying. You're kind of, you're basically saying <clears throat> that, um, that, you know, even just the idea to take control and I'm going to have a C-section and orchestrate this particular thing. Even that um, was destiny. And this is very, very, very interesting because then we're looking at this thing and saying, this thing of astrology and saying that everything is totally written. It's all pre-written. I had a really great email debate with one of you, one of the regular viewers who's based in India, we had a terrific email conversation. I really enjoyed it. And this gentleman had said, um, you know, if it wasn't all written, what's the point of astrology? And to that, I said, if there wasn't a drop of free will, what's the point of life? We have free will. We really do. Timelines change, timelines shift and change, depending on what you do with your free will. This is for sure. And I'm going to pull out a book, actually, that I have been reading lately. This is um, Heart Defoe Robert Svoboda. This is Light on Relationships. Absolutely terrific book. And I will share with you something that, yeah, here it is. Let's see which bit am I going to re read out here. He's talking about the grooves. So he says, Rasa, the juice of life, flows better when those who try to create it are aware of their own bhava preferences and understand how their own internal mental grooves may incline them to make certain choices and avoid others. Right? These mental grooves that get formed over time. The repetition. The planets keep moving, and they and they. We build these habitual patterns, right? Here he says, humans have free will, the choice to hop out of their grooves. And this is when on, on my website I say that we can go beyond the stars. This is exactly what I'm talking about. We can, okay? Because once you identify, um, you know, let's say you've got addiction, problem with addiction. You've got some kind of Venus Rahu in the fifth or something like that, right? And, and you, you become very aware of that. It's a very repetitive thing, right? You become aware of it. And then you, you decide, you know what? I get this thing and I don't need to do this anymore. 
and you evolve, you grow, you change. And then that Venus Rahu use it in a very different way. But it started off as this addictive thing that, that you've had to deal with, right? Uh, it says here, so humans have free will, the choice to hop out of their grooves. As long as you ignore your grooves, you will conform to them. So your experiences of your existence will seem fated. It's an illusion. You know, if you're thinking that astrology can predict 100% absolutely everything, then I'm, I'm sorry, I don't hold that belief at all. And I, this, is, this is why I call myself a coach and not an astrologer, even though astrology is the basis of everything that I do. I call myself a coach because I'm trying to help people do exactly what, what is being said in this book, that we become aware of these recurring things. And then we learn through the use of our free will how to respond better to life, how to choose better, how to do something different, how to create something new. And another astrologer who goes into this in quite a bit of depth is Ernst Wilhelm. And I'm going to leave a link to his school below. You can click on that and it's a really brilliant school. Lots of t fantastic content in there. And there's a new thing that he's done, which is absolutely brilliant, which is Healing Rahu and Ketu. And there he tackles the topic of a failed Ketu and a failed Rahu. He said, in your astrology practice, you may have people come to you in your 50s and he says that um, these are people who they're really off track. They are really, really, really off track and their life is really not um, anywhere where they would have wanted it to be. And, you know, he has tackled in depth this concept of, yeah, the, you know, failed, Ketu failed Rahu because Rahu maturation is 42 and um, Ketu maturation is 48. And he says that there would have been certain opportunities it would have come at those times and if you didn't take those um, you you are you're kind of declining life in a way and and when you do that kind of thing that's when the planets start to beat you up they're going around as they normally do but they're not helping you now they're beating you up right so the other thing I wanted to say as part of this conversation was that um, astrology is not God, okay? And that's another really big concept. Astrology is a tool through which we can get a little tiny flicker of a glimpse of God, maybe, you know, if we're lucky, right? That, that's, it's, it's a way, of, it's a framework through which you can get closer to God. But it's not God. Okay, so this comment that you've made, Siraj, here, where you're talking about, you know, even the thought to, um, to have the C-section and, and, you know, deliberately take over, even that's uh, destined by astrology, it could be. Okay, it could be. But it might not be. And God works in very, very mysterious ways. The other thing is, I don't think the concept of absolute or 100% manifests on this earth at all. Um, whether you're using astrology, whether you're using science, whether you're using anything, you know, um, there's no, you know, every time measuring, let's see, I don't have my measuring tape here, that I've got a ruler and anyway, you know, when, when they measure things and, and the scientists have gone deep and they drill deep and every time you see what is a millimeter and it's a nanometer and then it's a particle and then inside the particle there's all this space and that's whoa that's mind-boggling how is there all this space you know it's like science is trying to um to to nail this stuff just as we are in this branch of astrology science is trying as well but it's amazing because every time you drill deeper and you go deeper and deeper and you uncover a new mystery that's god right god and the universe can't be hacked god and the universe can't be predicted 100 percent you know and i think astrologers can get pretty good at predicting but i i wouldn't be inclined to um say that it's 100 percent accurate i think that's 
misleading. And I think the great use of this tool of astrology is to get closer to God and, and to get closer to yourself. I, I, I look at people. I like to look at people and I like to look at, um, you know, what are your patterns? What are your mental grooves? As uh, Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda are saying here, what are your mental grooves? And what, what do you want to go beyond? What do you want to evolve beyond? Right? Because as these planets move around, you get really, you get three goes of Saturn. You know, um, so he's one to get to know. And the others, you know, you get, well, you get many goes of the faster moving planets. You get quite familiar with them. But um, some of those really big strategic Saturnian things, we don't get too many goes or opportunities. So, yeah, I just thought I would dip my toe into this topic of um, just looking at the time. I've got 11 minutes there. I think I'm going to wrap up, but I just wanted to share some of my thoughts on that topic because it's such a great question. And I thought it needed a little video discussion about it, about free will um, and astrology. And I, you know, I'm a big fan of free will and I'm a big fan of being in the now and finding our power and using it to go beyond. Uh, and astrology is a wonderful tool to give us information that will help us steer our lives and choose well with our free will. So I want to thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for subscribing. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.